Hello and welcome to Mr Barton's autograph video number 25. Now this week we're going to take a look at one of the most common things people tend to do with autograph and that's to use it to investigate straight lines and the equation of straight line graphs. And we're going to have a look at two different approaches to this and discuss the merits of both. Right, so all I've done is I've literally cracked open autograph in standard mode, not made any changes, and the only little adjustment I'm going to make is I'm going to hover to the bottom of the screen, right click and get rid of show key. Now whenever I approach straight line graphs, I always like a baseline equation on there, and the classic one to choose of course is y equals x. So let's get autograph to plot that. First thing I'm going to get my old turtle on there, I think I called him a snail or something last week, but I'm pretty sure he's a turtle. So click him, I am going to hit enter equation, I'm going to type y equals x, we'll get the students to predict what they think it's going to look like, and my old mate turtle is going to plot this. Now, if turtle's ever going a bit too slow for you, just give him a little click and he speeds up and he gets to the end there. Now, I like to get y equals x and just make it a dashed line, just so it distinguishes it from the other lines I'm going to draw. So click on it, uh, right click, edit draw options, and hopefully you get the option to make it a nice dashed line. Now, the first approach is to use Autograph's excellent constant controller. So, to do this, what we'll, uh, we are going to enter an equation, but instead of putting numbers, we're going to put the classic y equals mx plus c. Now, a golden rule here, whenever you use constants on Autograph, if I was you, I would not let Autograph choose the start values for them. You pick them yourself, and try and do it so nothing changes on the screen. So, I'll show you what I mean here. If you go to Edit Constants, at the moment I've got y equals x, plotted, but Autograph now wants to plot y equals x plus 1, because the value of c is set to 1. Well, I'm going to change that to 0, so nothing changes on the screen. Click OK, and it looks like that, and then it's a lot more powerful when things start to move. Right, OK, let's get the constant controller on the go. Now, what we can do here is get the students to predict what's going to happen when the value of C increases and the value of C decreases. I can use the right left buttons to change the step size, so if I want it a bit more accurate, I've got my little 0.1s on the go there. And if I use the drop-down menu, I can do the same with the value of M and increase it and decrease it. If I want to keep a track of all these uh, changes, if I just click on the, on the line itself and I go to the text box, then what I get now is a nice dynamic text box. I'm just going to make sure I'm in ice blue. And it keeps a, Autograph keeps a track of the current value. So if I click OK, and now I start moving my constants, as the value of M changes, this text box keeps a nice track of it. Now that's excellent. I really, really like the constant controller. My only concern with this is that the whole concept of a constant is quite a tricky one for students to get their head around. And they normally only grasp that around GCSE or even A-level times. Whereas they've got to get their heads around the equations of straight line graphs much earlier. So I tend to favour for the younger students when they first see straight line graphs a different approach. With the constant controller, what you're actually doing is manipulating the equation of the straight line and seeing how it changes the line itself. Whereas with this next approach, you actually change the line and observe how it changes the equation. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm just going to click on my straight line and delete it, and that will get rid of my text box as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plop two points on my, e, um, on my axes. So I'm going to pop one there. It doesn't really matter where you do it. And I'm going to pop one there at 2, 1. And a little trick here, with that selected, if I just right click and I go to circle, I'm just going to put a circle of radius 0.2 and it just makes that point stand out a little bit more. And I'll do the same here, select that point, right click, circle, radius 0.2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Autograph to draw me a straight line between these two points. So I'm in whiteboard mode, so no need for shift or anything like that. Click on the centre of that point, click on that point, they're both selected, right click and we will have a straight line. There it is. Now what's nice here is I can move these points and as I move them the line changes and I'm going to get Autograph to keep a track on that. So if I click on my line, same thing again, let's get a bit of a text box on the go. I get a nice ice blue text box. There it is. And at the moment Autograph is telling me that the equation of that line is y equals x minus 1. And then I can move things around a bit and every time I move it I can get students to say, well what's the green line and the red line got in common? Um, and what's different about them, and how's that reflected on their equations. And now if I change it to something like that, what's one of those two lines got in common, and what's different? Anyway, I'm out of time. There's two different approaches to straight line graphs. Hope that was useful. Hope all's well, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.